Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about polyglot programmers and the benefits of being one. So let's get into it. So the question in question was pretty much that. Frederick, what is the benefit of being a developer who knows multiple languages and can deal with multiple tools? And the short answer is that you get a holistic picture of software engineering and you start to understand the bigger picture of, uh, of the industry. Let me explain. So I want to start out by saying something first and that is that I don't encourage anyone to be a polyglot programmer or something like that. At least not in the beginning of things. And the reason why I try to discourage you a little bit from that is because I see all too many people who think, that, and I'm very sorry that this is the case, there are so many job postings out there that have so unre unreasonable lists of things that you should know that it's, in, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so dumb. There's no, no one is going to be a junior developer or a mid-level developer and know half of the stuff that they're going to ask for. But that's, that's another sort of problem. The reason why I try to discourage people in the beginning at the very least to try to be too diverse is because you need to at the very least get to good enough first. And what I mean by good enough is that you have learned the basics of one set of tools that will allow you to pay the bills. That's the first thing that you should focus on, at least in my opinion. It makes sense, I hope, to you as well, because if you are going to be a professional software developer, well, ask yourself, does it really matter what you know? Does it really matter if you know the latest and trendiest tools on the market if you already have a job? Does it really matter if you know how Kubernetes works or microservices work when you get when all the companies in your region really only hire application developers who know some PHP and most of them are working on a monolithic application? You see, all of those trendy, amazing things that are out there and gets people excited. I mean, if you are a tech nerd like myself, for an example, you really want to learn these things because it's interesting to you. But for professional reasons, the most logical thing for you to do is to make sure that you're good enough first. Before you go, I mean, if you're doing it in your spare time and you feel like you already are kind of good enough at the things that you need to be good at, go for it. That's what I like to do. I, I like to play around with tons of stuff. And there's a lot of people like myself, like I have tons of coworkers who play around with all kinds of stuff in their spare time, but they have reached good enough first. And good enough is that you can get paid to do the job. Once you have reached that point, well, then you can actually sustain your lifestyle or your job or your career, whatever you'd like to identify it as, as a software developer. And that should be your first and primary focus because I can promise you this, some people they believe that the amount of tools you know is equivalent to how much value you have on the job market. That is true to a point. And the point is when you actually know them so well that you can effectively work with them in the environment where you're going to work. Now that is a key thing. The reason why that's a key thing is that if you suck at 300 different tools, nobody's going to hire you. All they're going to see is a CV from a person who, and this is very funny, think about this guys before you do this. If you have a junior's profile, like you've been working, for, uh, you've had, your first job hasn't even come around yet or something like that, and you list out that you know Kubernetes, you know Docker, you know JavaScript, CSS, all the SBA frameworks, you know how to use Puppet and Ansible, and you know how to do microservices, and you know how to do um, your work with Kafka. I could just, we can just list out all the things. If you just float out your CV, the first thing any reasonable recruiter, or at the very least any reasonable uh, technical recruiter is going to do, like the first thing they're going to do is they're going to assume that you are full of shit. Or at the very least that you think that you know these things when in reality you may have, you, you, because you don't have the years to reflect 
a CV that is so bloated that shit, it makes my CV look like something ridiculous and people much more senior than me, like, they don't have all this stuff on the CV. But you have, after what, a year, a two years, maybe three years? It's, uh, it's unreasonable for you to state that, or it's, it's unfeasible that you would have be, become good enough, quote unquote, to professionally work with all of those tools at the same time. It's so, there's so much of it. So that's why I encourage you to not go too wide in the beginning of things and try to learn everything. Start out by focusing on the core stuff the core stuff that will actually get you hired and embed those things. Because once you have gotten to a point where you can do these things kind of in your sleep or at the very least without being worried that it's that you're not going to get hired or something like that, then just go for it. The, because the benefits of having a polyglot mindset or learning multiple languages is that you will actually become a better software developer in general. It's similar to if you want to be a really good boat builder, well, if you the only thing you build are small canoes, well, then you're going to be really good at going through a set of steps in order to produce a canoe. You're going to learn how to structure that boat and you're going to be able to build canoes really well. But if you want to be a really good boat builder in general, you want to be a master boat builder, you have to try to build different types of boats using different types of methods because if you can because then your amazing ability as a human which is the best thing we've ever been graced with it, your your pattern matching ability your ability to see a pattern in things and draw logical conclusions from these patterns is going to start kicking in you're going to learn some of it by just doing the same thing in the same way over and over but you're going to grow exponentially much more if you try to build a ship or you might try to build a dinghy or you might try to different all kinds of different types of ships. If you just try different variations of sort of the same thing, you will start to see a pattern to the whole thing and enlightenment, I promise you, is sure to come. And the same thing is true for software development. A lot of my favorite uh, learnings that I apply in something like Node, for example, didn't come from the Node ecosystem. They came from Java, or they came from Rust. They came from, in some cases, Golang. There's tons of these, and Elixir as well. There are tons of these concepts from different languages that may not be a copy-paste solution for a specific stack that you're using, but by just understanding things and learning from the ways that the language has structured itself to solve certain problems, you will gain a much more holistic understanding of how a problem can be solved. And when you truly understand a problem and you understand the different ways people solve that problem, you will have a much more in-depth understanding of the whole picture and how to solve problems effectively than if you just knew one way of solving that problem. So what I want you to take away from this is that being diverse and knowing multiple languages and so forth is a good thing if you want to have a master level understanding of how to solve certain problems because the more languages you know and in the more ways you know how to solve the same problem, the better your holistic understanding of that problem is going to be. But I warn you immediately and I say, don't try to start out that way because that's something that you earn. You earn an understanding of multiple stacks and multiple languages over time. If you start too early and you try to get ahead just because you think that that's going to increase your market value, you're kidding yourself. Nobody's going to believe that a junior developer knows everything in the entire industry at the same uh, before they've even spent their first year in the industry. It takes time to earn this sort of uh, this sort of understanding. And being good enough means that you don't just read something once and then you can look it up a million times and then sort of hack it together as kind of like Bambi on ice you don't really you can't really get stable it means that you have learned it so well that you can kind of just do it now you don't really you're not so insecure about it once you reach that point with one stack then you will feel hopefully inclined to try something else out as well and then work from there the important part is that you give it enough time so that you at the very least can be productive in the tools that you have chosen before you try to learn all the things at the same time. Have a great day.